Hi everybody and welcome back to Digital Integrated Circuits. We're going to now continue lecture 6 on interconnect. We started and talked about capacitance and resistance, then we went deep into interconnect modeling. Now we're at the final part of this lecture which is about wire scaling. So in previous lecture we discussed transistor scaling, but what about the wires? Well, we could try to scale the interconnect at the same rate as device dimensions. We called that rate S. And this makes a lot of sense for local wires that connect to smaller devices and gates. They just scale along with the devices and gates. But there's also global interconnections like clock signals, buses, etc. that won't scale in length. In fact, the length of the global interconnect is proportional to the die size or the system complexity. And the chip is big. So global interconnects are the ones that actually have to go from side to side on the chip. But let's start with local wire scaling. So, looking at the local interconnect, connect, what we should do is we should also scale everything by 1 divided by S. So, um, the parameters that we're going to be using in this set of slides is W for the width of the wire, H for the height or thickness of the wire, okay, and um, L is going to be the length of the wire. T is going to be the distance of the wire from ground. So, if everything um, gets smaller by 1 over S, our capacitance is... The, um, the, the parallel plate uh, L times W divided by the distance from the, uh, the ground, and that's proportional to 1 over S in this case. The resistance, on the other hand, is uh, the squares, the number of squares basically um, divided by uh, times the R square. So L divided by WH, and that's going to be proportional to S. Therefore, when we take the R and the C and we multiply them together, our, uh, pro our propagation delay is going to be constant. And that sounds like a good thing. Right? Our propagation delay stays constant. But remember that when we discussed full scaling of transistors, our R on was VDD over I on, which was proportional to 1, and then our TPD was R on CG, and that was proportional to 1 over S. And that means that our transistors scaled at 1 over S, but our, our, our transistor delay scaled at 1 over S, but our wires scale only at 1. So actually, um, the delay is growing relative to the delay of the transistors, and that's a really, really bad thing. Well, we also didn't talk about fringe capacitance, which we said is pretty important. Um, so let's just put that into our model. So again, here we have our wire with uh, its height, width, length, and distance from ground. And we have the parallel plate capacitance, which is uh, proportional to WL over T. Uh, the fringe capacitance is just proportional to the length. Remember, we take the fringing as a constant that we multiply by the two edges. Um, we have the the wire, which is L, the the wire resistance, which is L divided by WH, and the total delay is R wire times C wire. Well, when we make everything smaller by S, what we get is that the parallel plate capacitance goes down by S, the fringe capacitance goes down by S, the resistance goes up by S, and therefore the the um, delay stays constant, which again is what we said is not a good thing because it's um, it's uh, linearly larger than the delay of the transistors. So, what can we do? Well, we can keep the, con the thickness of the wire constant. The thickness, or the height, we called it H up till now, isn't scaled. So again, here we take our model that we saw beforehand, and now it, when we apply the scaling, we keep this H constant. So everything else gets smaller by S, but we keep H constant, we do not scale it. Um, so in this case, we get our parallel plate capacitance goes down by S, the fringe capacitance goes down by S, those aren't changed, but the, the wire delay um, stays constant now, uh, and so our, 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 our TP wire, our delay through our wire, is going to go down by S, which is the same as the transistor, so as long as we keep our H constant, we can, um, we can actually uh, stay and scale along with our full Denard scaling type of model. Okay, but what about interwire capacitance? Well, when we don't scale height, actually, what we're doing is we also have the distance between the wires, which is going down by S, as you can see over here, um, and uh, making that smaller and actually keeping the, uh, the size of, the, uh, of the, the coupling capacitance the same, we're making that a lot worse. Okay, so um, the coupling gets really, really, really a lot worth, worse. Another thing that we just have to pay attention to, that aspect ratio is limited. So we can't keep on making this um, width uh, thinner and thinner without making the height actually smaller. So eventually we do have to scale the height or else this is like a big, huge building that's eventually going to be unstable and topple down. But as I mentioned uh, briefly at the beginning of this lecture, um, 
the nature of interconnect is that there are most maybe most of the wires are, are small and they just connect some gates but there are a lot of these longer wires and if we take these two different plots which are basically saying the same thing we have the length of the interconnect on on the x uh, axis and you see and this is the frequency or the histogram of how many wires there are and you see we have a lot 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 of these small wires but and the longer wires are, are less frequent but still there are wires that are um, much longer we call these semi globals and there are these global wires which are really long if we take several of uh, the generations of Intel processors you can see that despite uh, scaling the um, uh, despite sc the, the scaling we still get a very similar histogram of how the spread of wires are and we always have these real long wires because they're actually proportional more to die size which uh, stayed the same or grew uh, so we don't have many global interconnects but we do have them and they don't scale very well so let's look what happens when we, we take global interconnect. So again, we have the width, height, and, uh, and distance from ground. They all scale at 1 over s, but L doesn't scale. As we said, the global interconnect stays the same length. Okay, That means that our uh, capacitance, our parallel plate capacitance doesn't scale. It stays at 1. And our uh, actually, our number of squares, it gets higher, so the uh, resistance goes up. Um, squared and that means that our RC our delay through our wire is s squared that's a that means long wire delay really increases in fact it's it's really really bad because as we said that uh, the wire delay uh, uh, the transistor delay is 1 over s so this is actually cubic higher than the transistor delay and that's really bad um, and if the chip size grows which it did for a while L actually increases so uh, here we're gonna have to apply this constant thickness for global wires and if we apply the constant th thickness so h again doesn't scale and that brings us to the point where the parallel plate uh, capacitance is constant the fringe uh, the fringe capacitance is constant then the r wire only goes up by s um, and therefore the tp wire it only goes up by s but that is still um, quadratically worse than gate delay so when we discuss wire laying, uh, wire scaling, um, the device speed is going to be increasing, and local local connect, uh, local interconnect, uh, the speed stays constant. Um, or we could leave the height to be the same, and then the speed of the local interconnect scales along with the with the gates, and that was done for many many generations. Um, but how, on the other hand, global interconnect delays increase quadratically, which is really bad. And therefore, interconnect delay is often the limiting factor for speed. And that brings us to a bunch of solutions that what we can do is we can keep the wire thickness fixed. Um, so that's what's done. This H, uh, the thickness of the wire, is uh, not uh, scaled along with the rest of the stuff. Uh, and this is good. It provides a 1 over S for local wire delays and S for constant uh, length global wires, which is not that good. But fringing coupling capacitance increase, so this is an optimistic type of a, uh, of a, of a look at that. Well, what do we actually do today? So first of all, we have low resistance metals. Remember, we went from aluminum over to copper, and now um, almost all processes uh, use copper interconnect, which has better, um, uh, better resistance, and even they're looking at different materials to use. We use low K insulation, so the ILD, the interlayer dielectric, is no more uh, just silicon dioxide. It's lower K materials that reduce the actual capacitance that we have, um, due to, especially due to the fact that we keep on bringing these big walls of, uh, of interconnect closer to each other. Okay, but what is actually really done and helps alleviate the problem is that we divide our uh, metals such that we use the lower metals for local interconnect, the medium metals for semi-global, and the high levels for global interconnect. So these low metals, M1 and M2, are local interconnect. They're thin, they're dense, they use minimum rules for both spacing, for width, and they have small heights. But when, once we go up higher, what we're going to do is we're going to send our global routes up high. We're going to uh, route our clocks. We're going to route our power. And we're going to route long um, uh, global routings in these higher, either semi-global or global uh, uh, lines. And as you can see in the picture over here, these uh, will have much a higher height. They'll have a uh, much larger spacing between them. And, and so they get uh, much better when it, in terms of how the, the, uh, the, the delay through them goes. So looking at a modern interconnect, what you have here, again, is what I showed uh, schematically on the previous slide. 
Here's a cross-sectional uh, type of an illustration. You see that there are a couple uh, metal layers of local interconnect, which are small uh, height-wise. They're very dense. Then you go up to an intermediate layer. This is often called an X layer. This is often called a Y layer, and this is often called a Z wire uh, layer. So the, the the Y layers will be used again for things like uh, a lot of the clock trees and, and just things that go between modules. And then the real high uh, high wires are very thick. They have huge vias. Um, they really have a large space, spacing between them. They're used for delivering power, maybe some of the, the clock trunks uh, and main clock uh, uh, routes, um, and some other special nets like maybe analog nets and so forth will be up in these top layers. Okay, Here we can see a picture of uh, the Intel 45 nanometer stack, and you can really see this difference between the different types of, uh, of uh, interconnect layers we have. So if we look at uh, how metal stack has grown over over time, back in 130 nanometers, basically all the wires were the same. We had, you know, about six types of metals. They were just all the same aluminum type of metals. At 90 nanometers, uh, we started to get these larger and thicker um, type of global interconnect layers. And since then, it's gotten to the fact where we have three, four, and even more types and many more layers and so forth uh, of these different hierarchy of wires. So that's it for our uh, for our uh, lecture about interconnect, and uh, and we'll continue with our next lecture.